Bioshock Infinite is the third game in the Bioshock trilogy. It takes place in the city of Columbia in 1912. We follow the main character, Booker DeWitt, who has been given a job of finding a mysterious woman named Elizabeth in order to wipe his debt away. Bioshock Infinite does a lot to improve on the Bioshock formula. For one, that is by providing the main character a voice improved combat, bigger arena fights, and by not stringing the player by saying, would you kinda? So, this will be a Bioshock review from Codex. Hey, I baptize you in the name of our prophet, in the name of our founders, and the name of our lord. <laughs> I don't know, brothers and sisters, but this one doesn't look clean to me. The story of Bioshock Infinite is simple. It starts with the lines, give us the girl, we wipe away your debt. It is that simple. As you go along the story of Booker DeWitt in Columbia, a lot of things happened that change our main character. The only thing I could say without spoiling anything for you is that it's a rough roller coaster ride. So what I think about the story of Bioshock Infinite, it is a step up from the previous hit game Bioshock 1. To be specific, our main character can speak. When I played Bioshock 1 Remastered last year, listening to the messages of Rapture before the city went into chaos, it was great listening to the voices of those messages, but it lacked perspective from our main character. But in Bioshock Infinite, I was hooked into the story within the first 20 minutes while I was exploring the Church of Columbia and the festival. So what I'm trying to say is I love how the main character ties into the unknown land of Columbia. First by questioning everything about the place, which is the beliefs, the propaganda, the culture, and the history. But Booker DeWitt isn't the only one with motives in the land of Columbia. Those characters that have motives are Comstock, Captain Slate, Daisy Fitzroy, and the Lutessa twins. The story arcs of these individuals in the game, they are baked into the lore of the city, and how the city was made, and how the city will fall. And these events will unfold as you go along the story of Booker DeWitt in Columbia, trying to wipe away his debt. So keep an eye out of how the city of Columbia changes as you go along the story. And also keep in mind how the timeline of the world that you will be exploring in will change in specific points. Why don't you give her a throw? I'm not throwing it. Wait! <laughs> now! Where'd you get that brand, uh, boy? Don't you know that makes you the backstabbing snake in the grass, false shepherd? The false shepherd? And we ain't letting no false shepherd into our flock. <laughs> Show them what we got planned, boys! So let's talk about the gunplay of Bioshock Infinite. The armory of this game is not as vast as what you would expect in a single player campaign of a Call of Duty game. There's just a few weapons and you can utilize them at their fullest without having to do much. What I mean by that, you collect cash, you upgrade your weapons, they get better, they kill faster, they shoot faster. So, it's simple as that. There isn't much you can do to change how power gun feels or how a gun shoots. It's not as vast as a Call of Duty game. But I love it for the fact that it's simple enough for one to keep track on which guns to use in which situations. But, if you just wanted to know, I mainly used a pistol 
a hand cannon, machine gun, the repeater, and the RPG. I never touched the other guns because I didn't feel there was a need to. I also picked up the sniper rifle in situations where I had to shoot at enemies at long range. So when I tested out the guns in specific moments in the storyline, the guns felt unique from each other and this made it so that you know which gun to use in specific areas. A good example of this if you're gonna fight an enemy close quarters, you might as well pick up a pistol or a hand cannon. But if you are being overwhelmed by enemies, you might as well pick up a machine gun or a repeater. But then I would highly recommend you to use the repeater in mid to long ranges because it shoots low but it packs a punch. And you would use an RPG just to shoot at handymans or just to shoot at enemies that had a lot of health. So all in all, each gun has its own place that it shines. None of the guns overshadow each other. There's always a place and time for each weapon. So keep an eye out on where you drop those weapons and keep an eye out for new weapons because you'll need it. You can also upgrade your weapon at vending machines which are placed throughout the map of Colombia. to connect you with a beloved spouse. Well, it's time to take back control from the men of metal. With possession, you are the master. You will bend any machine to your will. Give me one of those. With just a whisper, they're all ears. <laughs> Press to turn machines into allies. So my favorite part of Bioshock games is Vigors. Vigors in Bioshock Infinite aren't as OP as they can be when compared to Bioshock 1. So yeah, Vigors are well balanced in this game. But there's also new additions to the Vigors. There's the normal left click which is a normal strike attack. And you can use your right click to place a Vigor trap. This is very different from Bioshock 1 because you weren't able to put Vigor traps across arenas. The other addition to the combat in this game is you can also command Elizabeth to open up tears. Those tears could contain ammunition, meds, or guns you don't have available in your armory. And she can open up tears for automated guns. What I mean by that, she will open up a tear of a gun that will shoot for you. So the bad part that I found with the combat of Bioshock Infinite was that a lot of things would happen in a small arena and then at times you would run out of salt which will stop you from using your vigor and secondly you would run out of ammo which would stop you from using your, your gun. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is when a lot of things are happening in the game you're gonna have to scavenge and by the time you scavenge, you will be in a very bad position for you to be able to scavenge. But that doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Or use your melee weapon, for which you'll get it within the first hour of the game. And with tactically placed traps, you can also move around or maneuver around the arena. Just so that you can utilize those tactically placed traps. So there isn't a lot of bad things I could say about this game besides the scavenging part but it's something that I eventually got used to because of how the game was so easy to play even on the hardest difficulty available. But I didn't play on the 1999 hard difficulty setting. I am going to play it when I play the game for a second time. So I won't spoil the story and the ending for you, but as somebody who played and finished the game once, I am happy to say that the game was worth the money. I am just talking about the base game. There is also DLC where you get to play as Elizabeth and she's in Rapture, which is the map of Bioshock 1.
And in the DLC, they emphasize a lot more on stealth than running and gunning or killing everybody on the map. We know Booker DeWitt is a serial killer, by the way. So what I'm trying to say is, if you're a fan of the first Bioshock and you want to elevate that experience a little bit more, I would highly recommend you to get Bioshock Infinite, whether it's on full price or a sale, because the game is literally worth the money. And 90% of the time, the game will be on sale because I think this game goes on sale more than 30 times a year. So that is it guys for today's review video. I tried to make this one short and specific in the areas that I love and the areas that I dislike. I put an emphasis on them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sure.